are related to town hall maintenance from restroom renovations to security system upgrades. Uh, and then under capital equipment, we're looking to replace some old and obsolete equipment. Uh, most important is our Cromer paint machine, which allows us to paint all athletic fields in one day versus someone push painting them all week long. Um, the wheel on this has actually fallen off twice. It's sheared off. So when we were talking with our, our public works department this year, they're saying that the machine is outdated and finding parts is becoming more and more difficult. Um, so this is a brief overview of our budget. Do you have any questions? I do, Bill. You, you uh, if I heard you correctly, you, you mentioned a 3.3% decrease in your overall mm -hmm. budget. I don't see that in this. So I think net. So net. After yeah. the revenue side. So that's after the revenue side. Okay. I think there is a chart that does. Well, go ahead. I'll, I'll refer you to it. Especially if you go to tab 10, page 17. That's the detailed line item, tab 10. Yep. And before you get into their individual lines, there's a cover summary sheet on page 17. Oh, yeah, I see it. And it, uh, it does net it out. It uh, reflects revenue by expenditure category and then uh, nets it out at the end. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Um, I have some questions. Um, and I'm not sure, Bill, if you're uh, um, able to answer one of them, but um, I'll do the easy one. On the rec center, the 100,000, when is that recommendation coming forward and uh, has a determination of location been decided? The location has not been decided. Um, and when you say recommendation, do you mean from community services or? Um, or the committee. The, the committee, right. the advisory committee has voted and they support <laughs> this, uh, the location. They just want to make sure that it's somewhere on this campus. They would like it down in the municipal park because of a community park because of the ease of access to bathrooms, um, but none of that has been finalized. Once funds are approved, we would like to um, meet more with the board and consultants to find the best fit for this without trying to disturb some of the already aesthetics we have down in the park. Tom, with that project, would that approval come to the council for location approval, or is that something strictly by staff? It, it could if you like. Uh, we, as Bill said, we do intend to use the senior advisory uh, committee in that in that siting process, but since it's on this campus, it, it's certainly something we could check in with you. We'll let the committee and staff do their work and deliver a final recommendation. Okay. We'll get, um, <coughs> just to say that I, it, it's not going to come as a surprise, so we were <laughs> very much in support of the senior rec area. Um, the issue is about location. I, fully, I believe the committee's recommendation thus far has been to actually put it down in the, in the park mm -hmm. area near the concession facility. For me, it's a better location because of its integration with youth programming as mm -hmm. well. So um, it is, for me, a, an issue of location, location, and location. So the other question I have is really about the history of funding um, from um, other fee sources, not just child care. Okay. Um, we, in the past, we've gotten um, some type of historical chart that shows that X percentage on a historical basis is covered by those fees and um, mm -hmm. what portion is being funded by taxpayers versus being funded by those other fees. Do we have that? I didn't yeah, if that. you look at tab 9 in the exhibits, there's a bunch of them. Uh, they're mm -hmm. exhibit 7A may go to what you're, you're asking. So, um, Tom, Mm -hmm. You can help. Um, as a, as a uh, process of this budget, is there any increase in those fees? And so when I say those fees, I'm talking like the soccer program, the youth programs that we have, everything that's not child care related. We haven't, well, there's no proposed increase in those fees. Uh, our soccer program said for it, it fees pretty high compared to surrounding communities right now, so we'd like to keep it in that, that realm, so we are not losing people to other communities, but um, we're not looking to increase any of those fees at this time. With the exception of grounds maintenance, uh, I believe community services co brings in revenue sufficient to cover its cost. I mean, but for that element of their budget and their function, we would really like to run this like an enterprise fund that it's totally self-supported through fees. Uh, but that's, those are stranded costs that with the current arrangement with the school, and, and we do get a sizable amount in return, um, those are just stranded costs that I don't think we're ever going to see. Sure. Um, so just to, because I get to see this and the public doesn't, but just to mention if I got the right chart, it says that the unaudited is proposed about 87% is funded by fees, 13% funded by taxes, which is steadily inclined. And I do remember 
Actually, I was, I've been on this so far since 99, 2000, when I first got on the board. Um, so this has been a great progress. When was the last time that we did increase fees? We did increase our child care fees last year yeah. um, in the other programs outside of child care. It's been maybe four or five years since we've increased those at this point. It's always touchy. We want to cover costs, but we don't want to create barriers for participation either. And so it's, it's a balancing act. And I'm pleased to say that we're covering costs. Have we seen, sorry, have we seen a, d a decline in any, um, as a result of any changes in those programs, our child care, but those programs, have we had any uh, decline in enrollment or participation? In, in soccer, for example, um, the numbers had started to go down a little bit, but they're bouncing back up. Our, our pre-KK shrunk for a couple of years, and now it's increasing. Over the last two or three years, um, I know we have at least 10 teams in each of the boys and girls divisions, so that's up from, you know, six and eight and they're, they're continuing to grow. So. If you flip two or three more pages, it's uh, Exhibit 7D. I, I suggest they put this chart together, and it really shows uh, a number of things. Number of participants across all programs, the number of programs, and then there's a corresponding narrative that talks about programs that have come and gone and reasons why. Uh, we really try to be responsive to what consumers yeah. want. If oh. we're not seeing participation, we usually discontinue and find what people want to do. So um, on, the con on the opposite of that, have we, because we've heavily increased child care over time, have mm -hmm. we seen a decline in that? No, that's, it's, it's increased a little bit. Um, with the new Wentworth School, we were worried um, yeah. what that might look like, but after having a full year, it, it's stayed steady and increased a little, so. I just think the school ever goes into the pre-K business, so uh, an impact there too. Yeah. Potentially, sure. Right now, but it will have an impact. And because uh, child care is a great example, because we charge fees to cover all those costs, we actually pay rent, if you will, for the space we use at, at Wentworth for the uh, before and after care mm -hmm. and, the, and the child care program. Uh, there's a formal lease relationship, I guess, uh, or at least we pay them annually. Yeah. They, um, they have a, a formula to calculate heat and electricity, what it uses when we're there and um, at all the K-2 and middle school as well as Wentworth. So that poses a couple questions for me. Uh, number one, uh, seventh grade sports. Mm -hmm. uh, I know community services was asked to kind of, or maybe not asked, but as a default kind of pick up the slack for that. Have you seen an increase in, in revenue or participation because of that recently or? Not really. Our, our seventh, grade, seventh and eighth grade numbers have always been relatively low. Mm -hmm. We'll offer, um, for soccer, we do like a five through eight soccer, um, and most of those kids are fifth and sixth graders that participate. Um, as basketball, this is the first year we we didn't have a seventh and eighth grade group for that, so um, a lot of these kids are going to play either travel or with an AAU team if they're not making the school team. Okay, so what I'm hearing then is that the, the fallback position that if students don't have that opportunity in the middle school to participate, the fallback was, well, there's a community services program. It doesn't sound like there's a community services program to support all of those activities. Is that correct? Correct. We, we offered it, but we didn't have enough participants sign up for it, so we weren't able to run it. Okay. Um, looking at Exhibit 7A, um, on tab nine, um, it, it seems like you, um, you know the, the percent tax budget goes uh, tax, percent tax number does go down, which is impressive. But the value or the dollar amount tends to stay the same at about three hundred thousand. So that leaves me to question: um, as the programs increase and as your revenue increases, are you looking at taking that additional revenue and funding programs, or are you looking at taking that additional revenue and deferring tax requests? At this point, we've we've tried to offer additional programs. Um, we do get approached to offer more and more programs every year, um, and trying to meet that need is not always it's not always met. Okay. So. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Um, just, last question for me. Oh, I just want to say, just we're, we're we really aren't in the business to make money here. Um, we really are sensitive to, you know, we don't cost to be a barrier to participation. So it's finding that balance that covers our costs. That, are, that isn't also a financial barrier for folks to participate. Yeah, I'm just looking at long-term uh, cost projections. If we're assuming it's going to be in the $300,000 range year in, year out, progressively, which it seems to average out. I mean, I didn't do the math, but it looks like it about averages out to be that. As we expand programming, 
that's a benefit to the community, of course, mm -hmm. but the drain on the municipal budget, if you will, is the same amount as a fixed amount every time. And that's fine as long as it's predictable, yeah. I guess is what I'm, what I'm looking for. Um, last question I have uh, does kind of tie into the, to the seniors park a little bit. Um, I've asked this question before, I think, to um, planning, I think it was, that we asked. Um, is there a comprehensive plan for Memorial Park? Um, and, if, and if so, um, is looking at this new senior park going to play into that? Is that part of the plan? Or we have to adjust a plan? Or does, is there not a plan? I don't believe there is a comprehensive plan for Memorial Park. There were preliminary designs and designs that were approved by the council that, that went forward. But as far as the overall comprehensive plan, I don't believe that we actually had one of those okay. for that park. Okay. I think we'll be doing some of that as part of the long range facility plan. Mm -hmm. uh, this came up in the skate rink conversation mm -hmm. a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you'll see maybe in a bigger picture more of the municipal campus, the park will be part of that consideration. There's a couple of potential development sites on there. but it, at the cost of open space, right? Of course. I mean, I would just right. encourage staff yeah. to have a, a to do, to help develop some kind of comprehensive plan before we decide where we're going to put a seniors park and other how we utilize that. And it came up with the hockey rink as well was another right. another question that came into play. The good news is the sort of facilities they're contemplating for the seniors, um, you know, can be fit in smaller areas. Sure. They don't necessarily need to be all ganged together. They're not, you know, huge fields. Uh, they're they're courts that can be yeah. kind of fit in around. And an one of the the reasons they like. Memorial Park is because of the large walking circle. So you could almost, as you're walking around, you might be able to stop and play bocce or horseshoes, right. pickleball. ball. I, so. I think it's. The, I agree. It's the right venue for that. I absolutely agree with that. Um, uh, and and I would support it there before I would support it maybe up by the high school. But again, I just want to make sure, like we came into a situation when we were discussing where the hockey rink's going to go, having to relocate facilities, a skate park or basketball courts or tennis courts or something, and the costs associated with that as well. Mm -hmm. Be nice to have a comprehensive view of space dedicated for activities, whatever they may be, or something along those lines so that we can have a better idea of, you know, long-term staying potential of what, whatever it is we invest in that area. Okay. And I don't necessarily know if that's community services requirements either. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a larger consideration on the whole campus to really identify kind of pads for development without necessarily even assigning what might go there just so we can right. ever appreciate what the development opportunities are. Right. Because I've got three questions. Just as Sean had kind of <coughs> something he's interested in. Um, I know last year we had a conversation around child care. I was just trying to understand. So the, the total revenue is going up 100000 and you said it's a combination of more days, more kids, which mm -hmm. is great. But are the fees going up also? And, and they're, not, so? oh, they're not going up this year. They're, they went up last year, but we're not projecting them to go up again. So, so there's not an increase. It's no. just they got layered in sometime during the year. So mm -hmm. there's, there's no fee schedule increases for them. Okay. Second question I had, <clears throat> and it, I noticed in the write-up, and we actually had this conversation last year, that you know what you identified in your write-ups are cost drivers that are driving a lot of the increases. Mm -hmm. And last year was the same conversation where the decision to use organic versus regular ways to take care of the fields mm -hmm. is creating a lot more manual labor. Yes. And I had thought we were in sort of a pilot experimental phase, and we we're going to stop back. And I, and I think the number we used last year was that the organic versus regular may have been about a fifty thousand dollar differential. Are we? Where are we in that process? And are we still sure this is the right way to go? If it really is driving significantly more costs. So it with organics as. The science behind it is, if you have a healthy soil, eventually it'll come. The, your price will come down. But if you end up having to use a synthetic, um, like when it, to control grubs, for example, it will terminate that healthy soil you had. So then it takes the time to build that up again. So right now, the organics does. There's a lot more manual labor with the organics, especially weed control, um, where we used to be spray the, the flower beds, we now have to go and pull weeds once a week to keep them weeded. So that that cost does continue to, it grows because we have a lot of, like community park, I mean Memorial Park, um, several very, very large beds there that take two or three guys a whole day to weed every week, which in the past, once you put your, your mulch down, you would put down a pre-emergent and it would prevent the weeds from coming up. So. It's not, it's, <laughs> the science continues to change, so as more products are becoming available, it seems like we might 
there's more opportunity to use those in controlling weeds throughout town. Yeah, the, have we done the cost benefit analysis? I mean, last year it was 50,000. It sounds like it's increased again this year. At what point do we step back and say, is this the best use of resources, especially when it could be used for other things in the budget? Because I, I thought last year the conversation was the analysis was going to be done this year, that it was a three year sort of to get the soil stabilized, mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah. But it looks like we're still having some issues. Well, there's a pest management advisory board that has actually asked for financials, and we're going to provide them two years prior to going organic, and now the three years that we have under our belt in organic. Who's, who's asked for that? There's a pest management advisory board that oh, okay. the council's created that's okay. tasked with okay. managing that policy. So that conversation is ongoing. Um, and, and they really are interested in documenting, is it in fact costing us more? Because it's not just one line item necessarily. As, as Bill mentions, it's labor. Mm -hmm. um, in some cases, we've had to replace areas, entire areas with new sod. Uh, which, so it doesn't show up in that organics line, if you will. So we're trying to give it a, a, an honest evaluation. So we're looking at all costs um, related with turf <coughs> management. So we're, we're not there yet, Peter. I guess the question is, is the answer for your, to your question. Um, well, we, I, mean, I, I mean, I guess I guess the reason I'm asking because I thought last year when we asked we were going to be there this year, at least having an answer about is it a good thing? Are we in the right path? Will we have that answer? I mean, if it's if it's twenty thousand, it's not a big deal. But if, as you say, if it's starting to become fifty thousand, a hundred thousand a year differential, that starts to make a difference. So I, I, I don't know when we'll have those answers. Do so you think maybe this year, next year, budget time? Absolutely, for for next budget year, I we promise for the next meeting of the advisory board they'll have that information. So, um, for for many people in this conversation, it's not all about cost. There's a oh, no. there's a environmental benefit as well, and yes, so oh, absolutely, but uh, there's but there should be an informed it, decision made about it's a variable in the conversation for sure. Um, second question I had then, or, or third question is then, I thought we had talked about, or or maybe not. Um, Beach fees and beach access fees, and whether that could or could not be used to help offset the Higgins Beach parking and monitoring situation. Did how do we end up with that? Was that where the funds used to buy the meters and the monitoring is going to come out of? Is there any ability to do something with beach access fees to help offset the, the 18,000 monitoring costs for Higgins Beach? I'm looking for pol police. <laughs> uh, certainly, there's the ability. I think if we can demonstrate that there's Cost, whether it's in community services or in another department that are related to the to the beaches, I think it's a legitimate use and it's within the council's authority. It's a it's res a reserve account uh, under your control. So, uh, and I think there are common occurrences where we do fund things, beach cleaning activities and the like, um, are paid for out of beach revenues. Um, to answer your specific question, the additional law enforcement needed for the the parking arrangement. Do you recall whether those monies were coming? Uh, they're shown in the police department for sure as an expense, but there's no offset revenue at this point, right? There, there was offset revenue, or the parking meter was purchased right. from the beach access mm -hmm. fund, but the enforcement is in the no. budget. budget. But I'm just thinking the next conversation we're going to have <laughs> about resources and how do we get places. So, okay. Then that question. So we could do that, Peter. We could actually, it would be an increased revenue in the police department. It would come from the beach yeah. reserve account. Okay. Next question I had, the, the other thing is you mentioned, actually I was going to talk about it in, in the public works because it was in their explanation too, but how much does the two beach cleanings a week cost additional to the one time per week? Is that a huge budget item? So we're projecting for July and August, I believe it's $10,000, the additional cleaning. And that's thousand dollars for the two months. For the two months, so eight cleanings, let's call it. And that m what happens is, is when we clean the beach, you have to have it's approximately five staff. Uh, there's a lot of safeguards put in place by IF and W. We have to have a spotter in front of our tractor that walks the beach. Then one person rakes the beach, it gets dumped. It. So, um, and that's. Public Works does all the work for us, and we reimburse them for that. So that does come out of the <coughs> beach operating fund. The historical cost is been about a $50,000 seasonal cost to do it once a week. So uh, this additional is going to add another $10,000 to do it one more time a week for July and August at Pine Point Beach. 
Oh, it's not all the beaches. Just no, just Pine Point. Okay. So, uh, just yeah. to, sorry. But, uh, I'll get more. Go okay, ahead. no, no, go ahead. <laughs> related? No, go ahead. It, well, no, it is related. I, I, I was just curious to know why um, that wouldn't be in public works mandate for beach cleaning if they're staffing and using the resources. And why is it a why is it in community services and they're just paying public works to do the work? Why wouldn't that shift into Mike's budget? All the costs are shown. The expenses are shown in public works because it's his personnel. But there's a payment from community services from beach revenues to cover those costs. Community services. Okay. Okay. It's not unlike Mike doing vehicle maintenance. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Different departments actually pay him uh, for services rendered. And I guess the last the last question I just had is I, I didn't understand what a Cromer machine is. Apparently, <laughs> you, you've touched on that. Yeah. But the new tractor at 50K, what is that thing? That must be a heck of a tractor. It's, I mean, is it, is it necessary? Is it really the one you've got? The one we've got is, is the hydraulics are starting to go on it. So if you're using the bucket, uh, it's dangerous. To, to really to use it if you're not familiar with the tractor. So outside of our, really two of our maintenance staff, if someone jumps in it and they're not used to it, it's it's pretty, the bucket's very touchy. Um, and one one of our I summer... They can't, it's not a solvable problem by John Deere? Yeah, no, we've we've reached out to John Deere and looked to, to have them fix it and they've kind of let us know too that it's, it's outgrown its usefulness. Um, it is used, to, again, in conjunction with the other one we have to mow all the fields. We can tow that with the gang mower. That's why we're looking for that one. Um, additionally, it's got the backhoe that helps dig graves. That's some of the cost of that. So there, there's a detailed list of community service equipment on, on uh, tab 9, exhibit 7C. This one in question is a 2005 John Deere. And it is the unit, if you ever see them cutting the grass back here, and frankly, all the large areas, it's pulling a big gang mower behind it. So it's, it's used. Almost Five every days a day, week, yeah. eight hours a day during the height of the seasons, for sure. And it, it, the gang mower cuts 11 feet, so it, it's been a time saver since we've picked those up. So, I've scrutinized this pretty heavily myself. It, um, it, it does appear as though there's a need to replace that unit. I did want to point out, uh, just on the child care revenue, you could look at the revenue line in tab three if you're interested, but essentially because of the factors that Bill mentioned, increased use, expanded hours, and the new fees in the current fiscal year, we've upgraded our projection, year-end projection, by $100,000 above budget. And so what we're proposing for 17 is exactly that. Um, so uh, that's good news. Uh, we're going to be ending this year with some excess revenue in that account. <coughs> um, just one, um, so Tom, mm -hmm. um, how do I explain this? So there's conversations um, out there amongst um, every one of both, and we do have a public conversation that's coming on the 11th regarding some um, additional staff requests that didn't make the budget, but we're going to talk about that as well as um, the conversation is about how on earth are we, would we be able to fund that if we wanted to. So looking at revenue sources, which are outside of the tax base, um, we're pretty limited. Is there any room, and this is, a, this is an enterprise account, like you said, it's a revenue generator. Is there room in this account or in this particular budget to increase revenue projections? Um, whatever the source might be, the details can come later, whether it's child care, whether it's sports fees, whether it's, and, and I'm going to be honest, I've said this for years, um, I don't find um, community services is a great service that we provide. It's not an essential service. Um, and personally, it's $300,000 is not, is not paid for by the fees. It's paid for by tech base. I would rather see 100% of that being paid for by the fees itself. So there's gap in which we could get more revenue from the users. It gets to a consumer-based kind of uh, program. Is there anything available in this budget that we could look at? Uh, allow me to just uh, Absolutely. compliment you on your consistency. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, I'm Sorry. not aware of another exam municipal example that covers pushing 90% of their costs fee-based. Uh, so I, I think it's a wonderful thing. Um, so I, I, can we do better? I think there might be, we might be able to inch ahead. As I mentioned earlier, the final 12 or 13% or 15% is really stranded in, in grounds maintenance and we don't have one to pay that bill. And it's, it's through the shared services model with the school. We do get sizable things in return in terms of use of those facilities. And so one hand washes the other. But 
I will say, I think we're always going to have some chunk that's stranded, and we're just about there. To your real point, um, I will go back through it with Bill and, and, uh, and Bruce and see if we can squeeze some more out of that. I, I don't think it's going to be the answer to our, our prayers, if you will. N no, not by itself, absolutely. I understand but, that. But, and we'll be doing that analysis uh, across all lines, frankly, and uh, I'll be prepared to offer some recommendations a week from today in that regard. Okay. Thanks. Anything else? Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. You did a great job. <laughs> a lot of fun. So, so <laughs> Monday <laughs> Miller time. Are you going to be in Florida next week? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, next um, budget to go over is Public Works. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And work your magic. It's already been done. Are you raising fees for us too? Just go right to the bottom line, and we can make quick work of this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I, actually, that was that was that was my plan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you for the opportunity to have a conversation around around public works budget, um, specifically uh, operational, uh, both capital projects and equipment. Um, truthfully, the the, the, the overall uh, uh, operational budget piece uh, is is fairly unremarkable, uh, with a with a minor increase of one half of one percent or thirty one thousand um, dollars. So I, I think that that is. That, that that's that's a function of uh, of, of good fortune, I, I think, on public works part. In that, uh, uh, you know, obviously we we have the same wage and and benefit uh, increases that the other departments have. However, uh, some of the other departments are, are much more uh, staff heavy or or staff centric, have much more uh, staffing needs. Ours is very much has other factors involved in it, and probably the biggest single factor is is fueling uh, the fuel costs. Um, Tom and I have, have been uh, been fortunate to uh, to lock in some fuel pricing for this upcoming fiscal year and the year beyond. Actually, that is is going to save a lot of money for the town, uh, both public works and also the other departments as well. And so that's uh, that, that's a big that, that's a big thing for us, and uh, is is a, is a probably the largest reason why the budget looks uh, like it does with a minimal increase. And then on top of that, the uh, the revenue. Uh, conversely, is down one half of one percent, um, and and as I'll talk about, uh, as, well, I'll, I'll mention it right now. Um, that's actually not a bad thing because that that decrease is is actually uh, 106,000 of that is intergovernmental payments, as Tom was mentioning. Uh, the other departments pay public works for the vehicle maintenance services, and so that's uh, that's a function of the lower fuel prices. Therefore, making a difference in the in the in the, uh, the revenue. Um, actually, you know that that one half of one percent decrease is ninety eight thousand dollars. So real outside revenue increases uh, is, is is actually up forty four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, as 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 part of the conversation, also uh, next week there's going to be discussion around the um, additional staffing of various departments and that sort of thing. Um, one of the things I'm really excited about uh, and, and to talk about hopefully next week is is the idea we uh, we've been we've been approached by a couple of area municipalities to take on some of their uh, fire and uh, fire and rescue vehicle maintenance and so that uh, we certainly have the facility to do it uh, at this point we don't have the staffing capacity right now um, so what I will be proposing is a, is a $70,000 expenditure to bring on a person, uh, wages, benefits, and so forth. Uh, but you'll see in the revenue uh, in, the, in the revenue report that's in your in your packet, uh, there's a mention of a $90,000 revenue item in there that doesn't carry all the way over and show in that bottom line currently. And so those are the two pieces of it: the $70,000 expenditure for a $90,000 revenue generator. So um, that'll be a a conversation I'll be looking forward to having. So um, beyond that, I think that uh, the operational budget kind of stands on its own. Uh, probably some interesting pieces in the operational budget that I'd like to talk about quickly is just simply uh, in the traffic line, uh, more more specifically in the street lighting uh, line. You'll see that there is about a $17,000 increase. Uh, roadside lighting is costing about $186,000 a year for the town. 
And I do know that the Energy Committee, uh, as well as as well as uh, staff, are looking at opportunities uh, with recent changes in legislation uh, to uh, maybe bring some of that lighting in house or manage it ourselves and and have uh, some savings with the uh, with the annual uh, uh, rental fees that we're paying to CMP. So that's uh, that's an ongoing. Um, venture that we have with, uh, with with the with the energy committee, we'll be looking at that as time goes by. Um, so moving on, I think probably the, the the bigger piece I'd like to spend a little bit of time. Uh, obviously, um, public works is very uh, very very heavy into into projects. Uh, obviously, with infrastructure that sort of thing. This year, we've got a pretty w wide ranging array of capital projects. Uh, I've got seven projects, and they total about 1.6 million dollars. Uh, certainly a fair amount of money. Um, and some of these are uh, ones that we've seen in the past. Uh, the mid-level road repair, uh, and it's a little over, uh, just a little under 5 point, uh, 550000 That's That's been an ongoing uh, item for probably six or eight years now. And that 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 project uh, that that project is designed to uh, uh, fund some of the, uh, the the paving that doesn't get done within the operational budget, and it's the larger projects. It's uh, the, the the reclaiming some of the bigger projects. Uh, some of the ones we've done recently have been uh, Pleasant Hill Road from Fog Road to the Spurwink Road. That was a project that was done. Uh, we've done sections of Holmes Road. We've done sections of, of Broad Turn Road. So uh, they're very cost effective projects and uh, and they hold up well. The other projects that are on your list is uh, what, what's called a BMP, Best Management Practice Maintenance Program, uh, and that's in at $25,000, and you can see that extends out. Uh, that's a sign of the times. I think uh, a couple of weeks ago, the council had a workshop around stormwater and stormwater regulations. Well, here's an example of it. Um, these are... Uh, the town, up until probably 1996 or 7, had a practice of taking on, when they accepted roadways, also the associated uh, detention ponds and water quality uh, treatment facilities that were in there. Um, so this $25,000 is, is our start at starting to address uh, the 40-plus the facilities excuse me, that we currently are responsible for maintaining. And uh, this is just uh, just an element of stormwater and stormwater management that we're uh, we're, we're going to have to address and, and uh, as we move forward deal with it. So that's the rationale behind that one. Um, the reason that it's into the capital projects, uh, you know, we feel that once once we go in and we clean out one of these ponds, uh, they're good for another 15 or 20 years. So there is uh, this is not something that we'll be going back to uh, anytime soon. It's also to be appropriated, not to be financed. Uh, it does appear in capital budget, but it's to be raised, money's raised through taxation. Thank you. Um, the next project down is a subsurface drainage assessment. Um, <laughs> this is a prime example of some of the things that Public Works does. Not uh, not all that exciting, but 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 I feel somewhat necessary, very necessary. Uh, we have about 70 miles of underground piping drainage system in town, and a lot of those systems are now. Uh, uh, in some of the some of the subdivisions, are getting into their 30th and 35th year, and back in those days, they were making it with metal pipe, and they are they're on their last legs. There there's uh, there, there's a need to review this whole system, and so what this project would do would be to uh, camera the system, TV it, prioritize it, and the next piece to that would be to create. Um, a, a priority matrix so that we can then move into another portion of, of the subsurface project, which would be which would be annual uh, rehabilitation projects that would be consistent from year to year to year, so that from a funding standpoint, it becomes something that is uh, maybe not liked but expected uh, on an annual basis that we're going to expend a certain amount of money to keep this infrastructure up. Mm. So it's. You've got to you've got to get out there, find out what you have, what condition it's in, and what the what the impact is. If we, if we do nothing or if we do something before you can really make a, an informed decision as to what we're gonna uh, what, what we need to do to move forward. Um, Gorm Road reconstruction. Uh, I'm sure you folks are familiar with the uh, with the process that we started already. Public outreach for the whole quarter. It was a general study. This is the next phase of that, which is going to be a more definitive design and uh, then bid package for the uh, section from Clinton Drive to Maple Avenue that's the identified as the first and most uh, needed piece. 
And so this will be the design piece for that. I, I am in tandem right now also working with uh, the DOT for a potential uh, municipal partnership initiative program funding for the following fiscal year to try and line that up and get that in the queue. So this is this would be the first part of that, and uh, the seventy thousand dollars would get us the final design, get us the additional outreach and feedback from residents, and then also move us through the bid process. Moving on down the list, we've got the Pine Point Master Planning uh, Project, and that is uh, again a it, it's a big initiative. It's it's essentially a uh, outreach program to uh, to find out what the what the needs and, and design should be for that uh, East Grand and Jones Creek area uh, corridor, and uh, it's uh, it's it's an attempt to reach out to folks and and really create an area down there that reflects how people want to use uh, infrastructure now. Um, there's more. Uh, use of, of, of other modes of transportation other than just cars, it's more than just a vehicle mover, and so we want to make sure that we're capturing uh, the needs and desire of the, of the users down there. And then also that's another example of a, uh, of a drainage system that is, is well into its 50th year and beyond. So that's, uh, that's the start to that. Uh, we've got a fuel station replacement. Right now the current fuel station is on Manson Libby Road where the school buses are parked. Um, that system is going to need to be come out, come to, the tanks need to be replaced in 2018. And so uh, the original plan to public works back in 1995 uh, showed that fueling system being moved over there. The public works facility was there after the, after the fueling was done, uh, after the original fuel system was put in. So these would be above ground tanks and um, the system would be uh, over at Public Works and uh, where, where uh, management of it and, and overview would be, uh, makes, makes a lot more sense and so that's the, the rationale behind that. And then finally in projects, you see that there's a G GIS, Geographic Information Systems Aerial Imagery uh, request and that is every six years we try to do a flyover, have a flyover of the town of Scarborough and uh, we, we find that uh, that's about the period of time that, that we see uh, changes that make it worthwhile and make it uh, make financial sense to make to make that flyover and this is a this is a multi-year contract that we have uh, that the area, Cumberland County area has, uh, actually the whole state does, with with the main GIS board, uh, and so that would be a uh, uh, in, con in conjunction with the other area municipalities. So um, that's uh, that's a very, uh, very very timely project as well. Um, so that's projects, uh, and if it uh, pleases the finance committee, I'll just talk quickly about capital equipment. I won't take as much time, and certainly can answer any questions beyond that. Uh, every year for the for the past uh, eight or ten years, I have come before the council and asked for the replacement of a plow truck and a light duty truck. Uh, plow trucks are we have 16 of them, and so an annual replacement does a couple of things. It keeps us keeps us current with uh, um, we don't we don't get into cluster <coughs> buying, which is which has caused uh, problems in the past. Uh, the other thing it does is is it kind of Puts, a, puts an annual cost in, a, in that is not, well, it's annualized and so it doesn't, it doesn't spike. I try to keep the, the, these expenditures fairly even if at all possible. And so the truck that we'd be replacing would be uh, going into its 16th year um, and, and as it's being built, uh, typically it's a, it's, we, we don't see that truck for winter operations of the upcoming year of, of July, uh, from, from July on. And then the crew truck is simply uh, just that. It's a, it's a light duty truck. It's one ton and below. And it is, uh, we, have nine, uh, we have nine trucks. And so a truck being uh, replaced is going out in its 10th year. And uh, these trucks spend a lot of time idling and, uh, and, and, and uh, doing around town work. And so um, these, are, these numbers, both of these replacement schedules are two and three years more than the American Public Works Association recommends for, for replacement schedule. But the bottom line is that we have a great maintenance facility, and we have folks that are that take care of the equipment, and so we're able to do it. So I might suggest those are two items that we would love to transition to the operating budget, or at least I would, because they, as Mike says, the equipment replacement schedule is such that we are buying one of each of these 
vehicles every single year, year in, year out. So that's one of the ones we'd love to migrate over when we can make that shift. The next unit is is the is the backhoe, and in your in your uh, in your budget it shows it's a hundred and ninety thousand dollar expenditure, mm -hmm. and that actually is is incorrect. Um, it is a it's it's a one hundred and thirty five thousand dollar expenditure. However, the forty thousand dollar anticipated trade in still stays in effect, so it's it's about a ninety five thousand dollar expenditure net when it's all said and done. So, um, I I think. That will be acted upon uh, at a future meeting to to change that within your packets. That will be one of the recommendations we bring to you next week. That you can consider. Another question: We replaced a John Deere something or other last year, didn't we? The we replaced the front end loader last year, correct? Front end loader, not yeah. A, yeah. So this, this is a little smaller. This this is this is the loader backhoe. This is the this is this particular okay. unit is 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 the backbone to our operation. It runs every day. That's the one that you see more often going down the road, doing the ditching and all the all the all the uh, the work that we do out there. Um, it, it's because it's uh, because it's a wheeled machine. We can drive it all over the place. It's it's a machine that gets used all the time. Gets used in the winter time by the fire department to clear out the fire hydrants. And this one is, is unique in that uh, the, the larger equipment I try and put out to a 10-year replacement, we found that with the backhoe, because of the amount of use it gets um, and the fact that with a five-year replacement we get good residual value to it, obviously, with a $40,000 trade-in. But the other piece we get to that is uh, we're able to bid it out and request a uh, no downtime warranty with it. Um, so we have one unit. We really need it all the time. When we, if we have a warranty item or a problem and it goes over, we bring, we, we drive the hours over there, we get ours over there, we pick another one up and we bring it back. Um, and then also, because of, the, because of the quality warranties that they have with this stuff, um, the, the actual cost of maintenance and ownership is, is, is quite low as well. So it's the rationale behind that. Um, the, 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 the next unit, and Boy, you know this one. This one is, uh, you know, you, you you mentioned the you mentioned the the, the track to community services. Uh, we've got a sixty-two thousand dollar expense here that we're off, we're asking for for a the public works floor sweeper. Public works is a, is a forty-eight thousand square foot building, and probably well over thirty thousand of that is 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 concrete floor. And this unit is just that. It's a floor sweeper for interior. The public works doesn't have any floor drains, which is a good thing because from a stormwater perspective and, and management, it's, it, it's the right thing to do. So this unit cleans up the oil-laden water, allows us to dump it into our oil water separator, and you know, is, is, a, is, is a huge time saver rather than having staff uh, sweeping 30 plus thousand square feet of flooring where they're, they're able to work and, and do this in half the time. This unit uh, replaces one that is the better part of 14 years old, I believe, and uh, is just, uh, it, it's worn out. And it's, it's a combination of, uh, of rust and just overall use, and uh, it's just the reality of it. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a big expense, but it's something that gets used all the time, and uh, it, it, it is necessary to our operation. And then uh, probably an, another one that you're you're looking at here that is something new is a, is a loader mounted snowblower at $112,000. Um, that is just that it's one of those big giant snowblowers that you see that the city of Portland has. Um, this was originally planned to be part of last year's uh, project uh, for, the, for the for the John Deere loader that was that we replaced. But uh, you know, in light of the rest of the budget, that was decided to be put aside for the time being. And this is, this is more a function of, I think, uh, two things. Uh, one, the, the types of neighborhoods that are being built now. Uh, we're going to require uh, more snow hauling, uh, assuming that we get regular winters, not like, not like the one that we had. And then also, I think it's a function of the overall expectation of level of service with the, with the general public. And so that's the, the, the rationale behind uh, the, the load amount of snowblower. We've positioned ourselves over the last few years to be ready for this, knowing that it was coming. Uh, for instance, the, uh, the Holmes Road site by the Beechridge Speedway is a DEP approved snow dump, so that we have a place to bring this stuff. That is our own land, is a short haul. And then also, we positioned ourselves just recently uh, because there will be some, some probably, if we get into snow hauling to a larger degree as time goes by, um, some contracted services through area 
contractors for trucking and that sort of thing. So we're kind of, we're, we've been moving in that direction for a couple, two or three years, and I think we're probably there, and I think it's time to start, you know, dipping a toe in the water for that, for that type of thing. And then finally, uh, a replacement or actually a, a, a new beach tractor, um, as, as Bill mentioned, as the, the discussion has been, that we're talking about additional beach cleaning. And the beach cleaning is going to do a couple of things. Uh, it's, going to put a stress, it's going to put a stressor on an, on an existing 14-year-old year old tractor that we have. The other thing is, is that that 14-year-old tractor is also the unit that we do our roadside brush control with and that sort of thing. So if you can envision um, beach cleaning on Tuesdays and Fridays, having to remove the apparatus that is for mowing to get ready to go beach cleaning and that sort of, by the time you factor all that in, there's not a whole lot of production time going on there. Um, and, and, and so getting a, new, getting a new tractor, putting a new tractor in there, Leaving it down at the beach um, is going to save us uh, labor and, and running time as far as moving it back and forth from public works down to there and those sorts of things. And so that's the, that's the, the driver behind that one. And that's proposed to be purchased with beach revenues. And that's what I have. Questions? Yeah. Go. <laughs> um, so I find myself in the awkward position uh, with this particular um, department of asking you, is the level of funding adequate to maintain your normal service levels? Because you're looking at an overall increase of 0.2% in your operational budget overall department. Are we... Careful before you answer. Yeah, that was, that was definitely a loaded question, of course. Um, my concern is more along the lines of are we delaying things, are we putting things off, and next year we can expect a much more dramatic increase or something like that. So are, we, are you comfortable with where you're at, or is this a function of trying to get in at the magic number? I, 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 guess, um, I guess as counselors I, w I would put that question back to you. Uh, you know, I mean, we, we, we well can... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, we'll wait and see. Yeah, I thought you yeah. my questions yet, by the way. We lost ahead. an opportunity. Right? <laughs> uh, hey, you know, I mean, at, at the end of the day, uh, we, we, can, we, we, can do, we, we can do... We can do anything that the public wants. Uh, you know, I, I think I, I, was kind of, I was kind of nibbling around that question with, the, with, with my comments about the, the expectations of... of um, the, the, the general public in terms of snow removal and that sort of thing. Um, you know, I, I think we're doing we're doing an adequate job. I'm pleased with some of the things that we're going to be doing, like the hopefully doing, like the the assessment on the drainage system. I, I, I am concerned about that. Um, I guess I would say that as long as as long as the the general public and is is satisfied with the road surfaces that they're driving on, which I think are at par, if not uh, a little bit better than, than surrounding communities, as long as um, people are satisfied with the level of service, then I, I would say we are. I mean, at the end of the day, we're a service industry, and, 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 and I think uh, if we're providing the service that people are happy with, then that's great. Uh, we, we can certainly do more. I don't think we should do less. Uh, I, I think we're you know, we, we, we've, got a, we've got a good system where we have, you know, the automated trash system is, 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 a, is a wonderful program. Uh, I think we get around town in a timely manner in springtime cleanups and that sort of thing. Uh, are you asking me, would it be great to have another person to do some plowing and that sort of thing? Uh, in the future, you'll, you, will, you, will see, you will see that because a, a couple of years, uh, next year, we're going to transition into the sidewalk program with hoping to buy a sidewalk machine and then yet another one beyond that. So, uh, you know, we've, again, it's a level of service piece. And, and so we're going to, I think the council is going to have to start answering a few hard questions about how are, we, how are we going about sidewalk plowing and that sort of thing. We do very limited amount of sidewalk plowing now. Is that, I mean, I think that is something that is, is going gonna, is gonna to come to the forefront, those sorts of service type things. But keep in mind, the budget really is, there's a couple of big cost drivers, Mike touched on yeah. them. I mean, the fuel savings is about 150000 bucks across the budget. Yeah. Um, the, the cost for salt, uh, not mm -hmm. because of the current year, but uh, the prior winter, mm -hmm. totally depleted our stock. So yeah. we had to really reinvest and get us back up 
um, so that investment was made. Didn't need to make it. Uh, don't need to make it next year. Correct. Uh, but beyond that, we're actually investing an additional forty-eight thousand dollars in more paving, which mm-hmm. uh, you know is dearly needed, frankly. So uh, I very much appreciate the, the question, but I think we're asking for what we need here. Um, I have one question on page eighty-one. Uh, under sanitation and solid waste, there's a, a fifth bullet under budget drivers that says it includes uh, PAYT, which is pay as you throw, and then it shows the cost avoidance and revenue. That's not included in this budget, correct? No, it's not. Is that a carryover by mistake from last year, maybe? Over, I know last year it was. Yes, I'm sorry, that was an oversight. Okay. That, that bullet should not be yeah. there. I just yep. didn't want my phone to start <laughs> blowing up. <laughs> oh, we forgot to mention, yeah. Like you did last year. year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hence the reason I'm all set. You're right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, things hated in this town. It was trash bags. Yeah, you might recall last year we had to back about $400,000 out of this budget right. because we yeah. started with it. Yeah. So uh, a few more, if you don't mind. Um, the 117000 in lighting, um, now from the Energy Committee perspective, that, if I understand it correctly, that is the maintenance payment or the contract payment to CMP for that, or do we actually maintain that and have staff on the ground to? No, that's okay. that. The, there's a, there's there's monthly payments to CMP for for those Cobra headlights and all the other lighting, and so with with the with the advent of uh, LED technology, pricing coming down, obviously there's an energy savings there, but also. Uh, the PUC recently uh, made, made some new regulations, some new ruling that uh, municipalities can can take those services over if they wish and that sort of thing. There's so. some capital cost up front to buy the yeah. infrastructure and to do sure. the LED course conversion, of course, sure. but there's long-term savings in terms of operations. And that leads into my next question of do, are we trying to position ourselves to do that in the future with staffing and 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 infrastructure, if you will, to take that over? I know we're exploring on the Energy Committee converting sections of town, if not most of the town, over to LED lighting, would we continue with uh, an agreement or would we try and take that over or, or that would be part of the cost, obviously, for... Well, I think we're, we're interestingly suited to consider that option. Not many mm-hmm. communities have kind of the capacity. We do have a uh, bucket truck and actually personnel mm-hmm. that I think would be capable. Mm-hmm. The other thing that's worth considering is if, if we do, and, and I would certainly suggest if we take these over, we do the conversion to LED technology, the longevity of those lamps uh, are much greater. So uh, that needs to be factored in. So I think, yeah, to answer your question, we're capable. Uh, but one of the options is to compare that against what the options are to hire private companies to do that for us, or CMP will offer that service as well at a cost. So that's part of the evaluation the committee is going to have to go through. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, to circle around back again to a question we had with, with community services, on the organic side of things, are we seeing a benefit in the measurement of stormwater runoff? Are we monitoring whatever the requirements are from DEP? Have we seen a reduction in phosphates or whatever it is we're supposed to be seeing? Or is, it, have we seen a benefit from that perspective with the organics program? Cur- cur- currently, uh, with, with our current uh, NIPTES permit, we're not required to, to do analytical monitoring. You're going to see that in the next in the next permit cycle. Okay. And, and so I think. Um, we, we've not we've not been doing any analytics, and so that's I, I don't have that answer. Um, you know, I, I would I guess anecdotally would assume that we must be the you know obviously any anything that we do uh, cleans up the runoff is is a good thing, and then also um, you know the 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 various uh, new uh, BMPs and stormwater treatments that are going in on all, on every development that's around, including the work that we're doing, uh, is is greatly affecting that as well. Um, the this is kind of a loaded question, and Tom did not prompt me for this, of course. But um, do you think a purchasing manager would help with some of the capital equipment gains it, it purchases? It seems like we're we're buying tractors for community services. You're buying tractors, uh, you know, buyers buying uh, ATVs, and we're all trying to get the same kind of SUVs and different things like that. So, would you utilize a purchasing manager for the capital side of things too? And do you think there'd be a benefit to bulk purchases, if you will, or a Streaming of the of the requirements, if you will, for the vehicle requirements. You know, we're all buying Chevy pickup trucks across the board, and instead of each department buying three or four of them, we're all buying we're buying ten of them now, or something like that. It, it, it would for me because we have uh, we we do a lot with with vehicle purchases, but we also have a lot of other contracted services that that we that we manage, and uh, you know, certainly I, I think that. Uh, 
we, we try to do our best. Uh, we, we try to do our best down at Public Works, and then Tom does his uh, his 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 piece with it. And we I think we're getting good good uh, good value. But I think that there is certainly uh, someone that is dedicated to that and is is crunching the numbers a little bit more. Certainly gonna 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 reap benefits. Okay, no doubt. And 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 also it would it would free up. Uh, you know, I know that uh, this this time of year, uh, Jane Ace and our shop supervisor spends an, an, an inordinate amount of time chasing chasing costs, writing spec, uh, modifying. Because a plow truck that we buy this year, uh, there's there's new things that come throughout and and new new standards and and so forth and so on. So that that plow truck spec that we used last year is not what we're going to use this year. It's got to be it's got to be touched every year, just like everything else does. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the capital the capital budget um, how much of that is driven by state and fed requirements versus you know what we feel is um, necessary I mean I know the fuel depot sounds like it needs to be moved we don't really have an option at this point because DEP is saying it's time it's time basically yes um, is that the only project in there that that is being forced upon us or is that I should say that's probably a bad word but is that the only one that's critical for uh, uh, regulatory requirements or are there others as well. For regulatory requirements, uh, yeah. I mean, well, the stormwater things, we're, storm we're gearing up for yeah. the likelihood of, you know, some some mandates, frankly. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's. The, I would say the stormwater and and you know some of the, some of the paving that we do is uh, uh, you know are, are it's questionable whether the, that might be done at a, at a future time. If they were, if DOT was funding their their programs, uh, that they they might be doing that paving themselves. But the reality of it is, is that uh, again, the level of service people are right. not willing to wait. So, right. so there, but there are. I guess my point is that there are there are things in here like the fuel and stormwater runoff that, I mean, we can do it now or we can do it next year, but we're going to have to do that at some point, regardless yes. of it's not a it's not a choice. It's we're cool. going to be. Correct. Mandated to do that relatively soon. Correct. We, we've, we've been we've, we've been told that you know we, we've we've gotten a glimpse of what the next stormwater permit looks like. Those things will be happening. Okay. And the analytics that you mentioned as well. Uh, so then on the Gorham Gorham Road question, um, I noticed in the budget you've you got seventy thousand in there for um, final plans. There's no money moving forward in future years. Is that going to be a separate capital request, or is that going to be something mm -hmm. that's that's yeah, I, I, five years should I be noticed there. that too. There should be yeah. some construction costs as soon as 19, frankly, and yes. probably two or three years after that. So um, I think it was an oversight in the book in terms of, but there yeah. most certainly are sizable construction costs coming down the line. Uh, okay, I just wanted to be yeah. clear that was Mike did mention we're pursuing partnerships with state uh, mm -hmm. to help defray some of that expense, like we did with Pleasant Hill Road most recently. Yes. Okay. Um, this is kind of an off question. The, the, the GIS requirement, um, we've got a drone now. Can we use our drone? <laughs> <laughs> or, or do we have to, is there a special, you know, camera that's required and a special service and they do a certain grid layout or something like that or is it, it something we could do in-house? No, nah, you, you answered your own question. It, it really is. It, it's a full flyover so that everything fits together from community okay. to community, that you have the right orientation and, and, and everything like that so that it's... Okay. So that we can actually use it for what it is, so that we can see impervious surface, so that we can see the assets on the ground, and that sort of thing. Okay. Could we get to that stage, maybe? If we're, I mean, I don't know if that's even possible, but uh, probably not. But if the chief wanted to let me use the drone, I could probably <laughs> use it for other things. <laughs> we get a pretty good value because, as Mike says, this yeah. is part of a countywide flyover, sure. we're, and we we share in that expense. Um, so. It, I, even if we could, I suspect it would be more expensive for us to do it ourselves, right? Well, considering you have 54 square miles to cover. Right. Yeah, I'm just thinking if, you know, take yeah. it out and fly it around and see, sure. we might as well get value of it if, if we're using it. Um, the, the, almost done. So i got two left and then I'm finished, I promise. Um, first one's more of a comment. I want to say kudos to uh, your group. Obviously, the, I've heard nothing but positive things from many of the departments in terms of the maintenance you guys are doing for the town. I think that's a huge benefit mm -hmm. to, our, to our town. Um, and at, across the board, hands down, uh, everybody seems to be very satisfied with the, the professionalism level of service they're getting and, and the cost, too. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you. I like your uh, methodology of labeling the trucks and the vehicles with the year and the number. I'd like to see that. I'll put you again. I'd like to see that on fire and police and every other place, too, because I think that helps the, the 
citizen to look at that, and as we've said before, looks like you got a brand new truck. Actually, that truck was a, an 04 or, or, a, or a 98, you know. It's well maintained, and that sometimes gives the illusion that we're heavily investing in, in vehicles and, and capital and things when we're really not. So um, that's just my plug to Tom to try and push that onto the other departments. Um, Last question, the floor sweeper that you mentioned, is there any potential use anywhere else in town or is it only at the public works? This is only at public works. Okay. It, it's one of those, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a warehouse sweeper is, is, mm -hmm. is what it is. Um, it really doesn't lend itself to outside sweeping. Um, you know, certainly if there were, were larger areas of a smooth concrete nature, uh, it could certainly be transported there to take care of it. But, uh, you know, truthfully, it, it gets quite a bit of use with, within its own, uh, you know, it, it's, it's used multiple times daily uh, as vehicles are pulled in and out on the, on the vehicle maintenance side and that sort of thing. Okay. But no transfer maybe to one of the fire stations or shopping. I mean, I'm sure they'd probably like that a lot, but um, I don't know if there's some cross, there's no cross. Use, Boy, you, you know, we, I really try when I when I when I source a piece of equipment, I try to have it be a multi-use piece. Mm -hmm. And but there's just some stuff that is a specialty piece. And yep, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. It's really the containment of the contaminants that yeah. ends up being key. It's not just right. sweeping sure. it into a corner; yeah. it's collecting it and being able to dispose of the property. It's really the yeah. uniqueness yeah. of it. Um, I just wanted to, so I'm glad that you touched on So you described your uh, um, level of services as adequate. I just want to, uh, I think that the community would disagree and say it's absolutely above average, if not superior, and just want to say thank you to all of your employees for that level of service. Um, the one question I actually have is, it's related really to the solid waste management piece, and it's really what's not in the budget, luckily, this year, and it's about the, the impact of EcoMain. Um, and our responsibility to them because there are no, luckily it's been managed very, very well for the last 10 years, 10, 12 years. Um, any, because you serve on the board as an officer, I serve with you, yeah. can you give any insight to the committee just so they can understand what EcoMain has been faced with because there's been kind of some ups and downs regarding tipping fees, the potential for future tipping fees as well as its current economic climate? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, you and I sit on the board and it is a case of uh, it, it, solid waste is a very cyclical, cyclical business. It's very interesting too, but it, 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 there's a lot of moving parts to it. Uh, for instance, right now, uh, the recycling markets are are in, they're just they've completely tanked, and so uh, you know there's there's uh, finding outlets for the material that we're recycling uh, has become challenging. But EcoMain continues to do a good job with that. Uh, we're, we're all happy that uh, fuel prices are low at the, at the gas pumps, but the flip side to that is that natural gas prices are down, and so power generation, of which uh, four years ago EcoMain was generating six plus million dollars on an annual basis with their waste energy facility, uh, you know, two thirds of that basically is gone. I mean, we're going to yeah. generate maybe two, two and a half million dollars worth of, uh, of, of energy, and so, you know, those are, those are all factors. Um, as you mentioned, in the last three to five years, or last two to three years, really, uh, we have the EcoMain no longer has any long-term bonded debt. Uh, it's a fabulous thing, but uh, you know that those are those are things that we need to consider. Uh, very very equipment-intensive uh, uh, endeavor, uh, waste energy. Uh, also, the uh, assessments have been gone because we no longer have those debt payments. Uh, the actual cost of trash has gone from eighty dollars to seventy dollars and fifty cents a ton. Um, I can say that we can probably uh, anticipate that's going to be the case for maybe another year or two, but eventually those prices will have to have to creep up. And uh, you know, so and 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 then talk about somebody that's that has to live in the in the regulatory environment. Uh, that mm -hmm. that is the poster child for it right there. So those those things all uh, all factor in. Go ahead. So uh, piggybacking on that a little bit, um, did EcoMain benefit from the uh, the state biomass? Funding that just passed last year, or this year, um, was that Kevin Kevin Roach, who's the who's the chief financial officer there, uh, runs uh, the, the superintendent, uh, is very active in Augusta, and it really it, it didn't it didn't help us that much. The the the, the state really has got a uh, they, they, they 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 really have some issues with the with the whole waste of energy and and it being a uh, being a, a, a reusable, a renewable, and, and being labeled as such, and it's very unfortunate. Um, but uh, we didn't we didn't benefit as much as we could have. Some of the LDs, some of the legislative stuff up there, 
if it had passed, would have would have positioned us a lot better. Um, so we're not expecting any reduction in dipping fees or anything like that based on. The no, no. I mean that, that we we pretty much hold uh, we're we're pretty much holding our own. It, it doesn't affect us that much one way or the other. It, it, it didn't. It, like I said, things could have changed a little bit if we had, if it had gone differently. And, uh, so the reason why I brought it up is because we've talked about as a committee and even as a council. Uh, moving from this uh, one-year static view of the finances and looking at long range and there's so many ancillary parts of this that are outside of our influence so whether it's the partnership with eco Maine, which we are um, I mean if you think about the current market there could be future tipping fees that are assessed to us as a community that we have absolutely no control of it comes completely out of the tax roll um, as well as you know county government and some of the other pieces so I think it's important that we keep um, perspective because I think it's going to be um, a challenge over the next three years, um, EcoMain's kind of forecast um, from a, a market perspective because of the cost of fuel and recycling and other pieces, even the energy piece of it. So that's a, that's the big reason why. So thank you for helping us understand that better. Any other questions? No, I, I just would like to add, I'll just echo the other comments. I think you guys do a great job, and I really appreciate all the work your team puts into the budget. It's always, when you come to the table, I know you're asking for things that you really need. You've thought it through, and that's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate your consideration. Excellent. So on to administration. Um, administration kind of pulls together the final stragglers, if you will. So uh, in a grouping, there's the executive line, which covers legislative, legal, and insurance. Then there's the town clerk, which also has elections that I'd like to touch on. And then we have human resources and general assistance, and Jacqueline's joined me. Um, so if it's okay with you, I'd like to start kind of with that order and make pretty quick work of it, actually. I'll just give a couple of comments at the outset, kind of the high points, if you will, the cost drivers. Um, on the administration side, uh, there is one change I want to mention right at the outset. It's actually a, a change to the good. It's a $12,500 decrease in uh, actually the full-time line. We ended up kind of double counting some money. Um, so uh, this will be coming to you formally again as part of a handful of different um, recommended changes that you could pass on to the council next week. Um, but in this line, uh, not only does it cover myself and Colette, um, and all the associated costs. We also include here uh, adjustments through our merit pay system, uh, and, and so they're here as a lump sum. Uh, the, um, the ACA, the uh, Affordable Care Act, um, is something that Jacqueline spent an, a lot of time understanding what the implications are, and there's detailed calculations as to uh, how many hours worked and when benefits kick in. In fact, this year we have about a $25,000 cost uh, attributable to these new cost of benefits for certain employees that have, have passed um, that, is it 30 hour mark? Correct, yeah. In prior years we had those allocated to a separate line. Mm -hmm. This year we made an effort to incorporate those hours into the departments impacted by that, so those departments with a lot of part-time or seasonal employees. And I also want to um, give a kudos to the finance department. You might know there's been a lot of reporting requirements that have come into place this year regarding notice and reporting both to the IRS and to employees on benefits and coverage. Um, many municipalities mm -hmm. have outsourced those reports um, and in partnership with the finance department, we've done that all in-house. So we've made a lot of good strides with the ACA uh, mandates that have been put on us and, and, I'm, and I'm proud of those efforts. So uh, thank you for clarifying. Sure. And, and so the adjustments that you see in the administration here are, are uh, a combination of uh, different merit increases for various um, very deserving employees that will be dispersed should the funding be approved. We also include here uh, sick pay and vacation pay adjustments. Uh, there's slight increases in both those. These are benefits paid out at um, separation. time of separation with employees. Um, so if I could kind of move past the administration, we certainly can come back. A couple of other high points under uh, legislati legislative. Um, this is where payments to outside agencies, this committee will recall that you've created a new standard in that regard. And I've proposed funding for the single entity that uh, meets the new standard, which is Scarborough-based and provides the majority of their services to Scarborough residents. Um, so that number has gone down considerably just because the others don't qualify, frankly. Um, Project Grace, no surprise, is the entity that, that qualifies. 
Uh, we have legal expenses going up slightly, uh, just based on historical trending. And our workers' comp and property and casualty uh, insurance have gone up uh, slightly as well. Um, so forgive me, that's a very high level um, overview. Jacqueline's here that can certainly speak to some of those other details on uh, wage and benefit and also on HR specifically, if you'd like. And I'm pleased to say we have no capital items, uh, projects, or equipment. And the work, oh, go ahead. Uh, I, was kind of, I was just trying to reconcile. Tom, I think last time you passed out this, this summary that kind of you mm -hmm. try to summarize different departments and break out the wage increases versus benefit increases. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to, it may be in this number on this one is the 12,005 you just mentioned. But I was just trying to reconcile. This shows that administrative wages, which sounds like it incorporates all the stuff we just talked about, is going up 40,000, about 40,700 to 20%. I was just trying to understand that number. But that, am I in the right place? So there's three pieces to the, the non-union compensation plan. Um, the first is the COLA, which is, is approved by the council, and we've tied that to the employment yeah. Employment cost index. But that's like 1.8 or something. 1.8, yeah. exactly. Um, and then the the two remaining pieces are the merit and the step. The step is about um, 1.25, and those for employees who are meeting expectations. Um, and that's the balance, the longevity piece. And then the separate merit piece is for um, about 20 to 25 percent of employees who are exceeding expectations. So those three pieces for the non-union component of our workforce are how that reached that number. But, but how does it how does it get to 20 percent? I mean, if, if it's 1.5 for coal or 1.3, how does how does that get to a 20 percent increase in wages? The, the, is there is there a position? I'm sorry, I, I need to know which line you're looking at. Just so very I can. first very first, first line, line administrative wages. It says that. 2017 proposed budget is 242.8. The 2016 budget was 202. You're showing an it's increase of four. Tom, Tom, it's the handout that you gave us. It's not in the budget package. Uh, it's the handout that you gave us that had all of the, the, the by department, the administrative wages. Yeah. So I was, I was just trying to back into. It may be that 12,500 is in there that you just talked about. Reconcile I, I couldn't reconcile, so that's why I'm asking yeah. the question. It looked. Hmm. Well, allow me to. Yeah, I need mean, a little more time. Um, so, w with that 12,500 I mentioned, the the first line in administrative full-time pay, for instance, that's where that money would come out from. That percentage uh, becomes 1.8 percent. So I think it might help partially answer your question in terms of um, that's a combination of step and cola yeah. in, in our little department. Uh, I mean, the one difference in the administrative line is it's where we put lump all the merit money together, uh, whereas all the other cola and steps are dispersed across all departments. But wouldn't that global yeah. view of administration, isn't that everybody all lumped into that one line? Yeah, I, I, I need to verify these numbers don't oh, okay. line up yeah. perfectly with what yeah, I'm I looking could, at. I could, in the I could reconcile, so that's why I didn't yeah. ask the question. So, so we we'll will, and I'll have a response. Yeah. We'll start the next session with Great. that. Yeah. Great. Thanks. So if I could go backwards a little bit. Um, this is where sometimes too much information can get you further lost than when you had intended by asking the questions. If I'm on page one of the administrative budget, mm -hmm. the actual increase in wages and benefits is projected at 8.8 percent, and that's for all administrative positions within your department. That's the, that's including executive, legislative, legal, and insurance. No matter how they're how they're kind of balanced across, doesn't matter to me. Is but is an 8.8 percent increase. That's that's part of the error. There's an extra extra twelve thousand dollars in that an line. Point. Yes. Which means that you're going to be about less than seven less than seven percent. So I just want to make sure that is the total number, regardless minus the twelve thousand. So it's about sixty thousand dollars increase, which is going to be about a six and a half percent increase. You're looking at page one of the page one. Yeah. 
summary of the total budget for you without the details and getting confused by that it's just sorry but, but even given that I'm still so if it's colors 1.8 and merits 1.3 so what makes, it slightly get, tricky, what makes it slightly tricky is the town manager has a contract, so he actually is not eligible for merit. Instead, there's a bonus provision that the, the council approved. Um, so with a small department, and I believe that includes town clerk, executive, and part-time employees. So the 1.8 only applies to the non-union administration outside of the town manager. Give me if I'm, I thought that the um, the benefits piece came in higher than what was originally projected. Bene uh, the, not the uh, the benefits cost. This year's benefit cost came in higher. That was reported by the school department. Not by you. We oh, okay, that. I couldn't remember. Right, right. You might be thinking of workers' compensation costs. That's on a calendar year, yeah. and our budget's on a fiscal year. Right. Um, so it wouldn't equate to the numbers that I'm thinking of, but mm -hmm. maybe if we get that clarification since we're narrowing it down, Tom, um, if we can get that for the next meeting, I think sure. that would be. Yeah, well, uh, for that first page of administration, uh, um, what's curious here is what's included in the administration is executive, the small stipend that you all get, and contracted services um, <laughs> for legal and insurance. So wages and benefits, purely wages and benefits in the pure sense, should be fairly small. It's basically two of us. Um, there's clearly more wrapped up in that wages and benefits. I think that's line. what drew Peter to ask the question. We'll, we'll provide that right. level of detail. What, what's being rolled up into that total? Okay. So, um, so the question I have um, is around um, is around the allocation of outside agencies. So we're allocating, we're only budgeting $17,200, which is Project Grace and Southern Maine Agency on Aging. Are they no. the only two that's, because only, yeah, are they the two that are being, because it doesn't really tell, I mean, the whole request looks like it was about $76,000, but yet in, in page four of your budget it, for legislative, it says that only. No, I believe it's only Project Grace. So that's twelve thousand five hundred. So that should be twelve five. I'm sorry. What are you changing? So I'm on page four. I think of your of the and it says legislative. Other costs seventeen thousand two hundred dollars. I thought you had mentioned that that was the uh, outside agencies piece. Right. Which is five thousand dollars more than what Project Grace was asking for based on this sheet here. Also Southern Maine Asian area. Well, that's what I asked, and he said no. I'm not. I'm, I, I did not intend to. Okay. No, I just was funding for them. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we ended up didn't we approving just Project Grace as being the final sort of the process we went through last year. No, we, we, we funded all standard. of these last year. We've had a dozen different folks request money, but Project Grace is the only one that meets your standard now. Right. Last year, though, we funded one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13 groups. Are you looking at exhibit five there? Yeah. There were 13 groups and we're narrowing it down based on the new standards to one, maybe two, which I'm okay with. Um, I'll be, personally, I'll be honest. Um, how do I, how do I want to say this? Um, and I mentioned this and I was a little, <laughs> I was a little surprised by the police chief. Um, I would love to see, I'd love to see Operation Hope get funding from the town. Um, the work that they do is absolutely incredible, and I think whether it's five thousand dollars that's kind of in the budget but isn't, or you know whatever it might be, I think that that's um, it's a well worth pro it's a it's a worthy program that to me is Scarborough based, um, but that's a personal preference. I just need to know which number to, which number is actually in the budget. Is it twelve thousand? Is it seventeen thousand two hundred? Is it so? If we can get that clarified, for, yeah. I don't want to hold it up for seventeen thousand dollars. So if you can get that clarified, that would be good. If you I think I'm beating a dead horse on getting that process. Go to operation tab hope. 10, page 4. It's the detailed breakdown of that line, and you'll see the only thing requested for funding is 12.5 for Project Grace. Okay. Okay. 
again? That's the only question I had, yes. Okay. So along those lines, Tom, um, I just want to make sure I understand this, that in the other costs, the 47150 reduction is based on the, um, uh, the reduction in the outside services requests, or whatever we call them. Yes. Okay. So have we seen a corresponding increase in requests for general assistance, or is it still too early to see a, a pull through along those lines yet? Or do we even expect to see a pull through? Yeah, I think we need at least a year to have any sense of that. Um, they're currently, we've funded a number of them in, in the current year, and so we wouldn't see the, the, the effect of that until next. Okay. Our general assistance budget is a modest increase of just under 2%, and if you look at the line items, our biggest driver is the state pushing back in burials and cremations. I don't think that's something the town really? has traditionally been very involved in, but there's been several um, un unclaimed bodies that the town has had to work with and resolve. So um, that's really the only major difference. Um, and in fact, we're in general, since we're actually getting more reimbursement from the state, um, so I think that, yeah. that probably all factors into that. I've heard a lot of things over 15 years, and that's the first time I've heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Well, I mean, it's sad, it's, but it's interesting. Well, if we want to get more, but the question is, is are they are they deceased citizens or just deceased people who happen to die in town that we're responsible for? Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. It can be yeah. either either or. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again, more maybe to your operation. Hope. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Good. Other questions. Do you have any questions? I don't. I, I think it's uh, a good budget. So thank you very much, both thank of you. you. I'll certainly provide clarity yeah. at the outset of the next meeting. I apologize for that. Yeah. Um, with that, that is um, that actually ends our budget reviews for departments, um, for all of our departments. Um, our next meeting is um, going to be um, on Wednesday. Um, so let me, uh, sorry, let me back up. Um, we, of course, have our regular town council meeting this evening, which is also a public hearing um, on the budget. Um, that is uh, beginning at 7 o'clock. We'll also have um, our next meeting. The council's finance committee will be May 11th from 4 to 6 p.m. Um, we'll have an overview for staffing, staffing proposals um, that are not being funded, but um, um, I do want to hear um, the story from the staff on why they're important, because they are important to us. Um, as well as final recommendations, and um, those, that will be the time in which the Council Finance Committee will make adjustments um, to the uh, budget, if it so chooses, to then forward a recommendation to the Council as a whole. And then also there is a joint workshop on the same day from 7 to 9 p.m. between the, town the full Town Council and the full School Board um, regarding the budget um, that is being forwarded. And um, Wednesday, May 18th, it will be the final budget reading at the town council meeting. That will also be from 7 to 9 p.m. And then, of course, um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that Tuesday, June 14th, is the school validation vote on their budget, uh, which is very, very important that we have um, excellent turnout and support for that. Um, any questions or any items that we want to bring up for the manager for the next meeting? Because it is our last chance to finalize our work and if there's any gaps that we kind of want to give to Tom to fill in so that um, we can be efficient with our time. Could, could I suggest we, we have been, Ruth and I have been kind of keeping track of changes we're going to, we'd like to bring to you. Uh, you might be interested to know that they total about $150,000 in reduced town costs. Um, I'm pleased to say that we've not looked at revenue at all, so there might be some additional conversation around excise and valuation estimate I think is still low compared to what history suggests. Um, and that puts us just about your, at your 3% magically, uh, just coincidentally, I should say. Um, so I, it might make sense to start the conversation next week with a quick rundown of that, because it may help inform the conversation about staffing. And then we can return to this and maybe have you endorse it, or endorse it at the beginning, uh, as your recommendations yeah. and whatever else you might want to do. Would you mind sharing that in advance? No. So that um, no. time to consider and ponder. Okay. Um, the other piece that I wanted to ask was really the one part. Um, so when we sat down and did town council goals, there was really three budget-related goals that we set forth. One was more of a, a declarative statement. Um, those goals were that we were going to have a predictable and sustainable ta uh, budget. 
um, and tax rate. That the goal was that we would um, try to be less than or equal to 3% and that we would also um, improve our budget projections relating to assessed valuation. Tom, if you can help us understand the assessed valuation piece because that's the one part that we really haven't focused on because I think it's important that um, the public as well as um, others um, understand the restrictions in how the council can influence the assessed valuation projections. But you can't. Well, that's my point. <laughs> that's my point. See, you're ruining the story ahead of time. You know, it's like, it's like watching the Titanic with you. <laughs> Shot at six. It's a love story, but it's six. six. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no. But if you can help us or kind of put that onto the table, because I think it needs to be reiterated every year um, about that, because um, it, it's a challenge because it's used a lot to balance ideology as well as um, some other. Um, right. just, you know, people's <laughs> personal preferences regarding budgeting and projects. So, Great. if you can, Happy to. if you don't mind doing that for us yep. as well. So, I just have one, one if you, yes, one, one question um, on as we get into the discussion about uh, staffing. Um, tab nine, the exhibits two. Um, just so I'm clear, that those uh, total new new proposed position costs are the uh, net costs. Total? Do they include offsets in revenue as well? So if we've got a position, let's say that's being offset partially with new grant money or something like that, the numbers that we have in this book are net costs or are they gross costs for the positions? The only one that has a net component is uh, seen in Exhibit 2B, and there's a net calculation right in the upper right-hand corner. Okay. Yep. 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 And, and everything is, else is gross. Yeah, that's a quarter of that sustainability position is the plumber coordinate, is a pipe and plumber position. Uh, but all the other ones would be new money. There's no savings right. elsewhere. Okay. So again, just for my clarification, as an example, on uh, tab 2D for police at the bottom of page, um, there's no number page, but at the bottom of the other page, 2D, it has a total new position. Total new proposed position costs, mm -hmm. 149088. That would be the gross costs for those position requests, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. And there'll be certainly more clarity around that. Yep. Uh, for your efficiency, particularly for the shared positions, uh, we'll sort out and have a spokesperson so you don't have four departments advocating for the same position. They'll be here and certainly you can draw upon them, but we'll, I'll make sure that one of them is appointed to speak on behalf of the other. Sure. Um, and actually that reminds me of uh, two things that I've, uh, one thing I've promised and then the other one is what I'd like to hear. Um, I guess the part that I want to hear is um, around the staffing model. Um, I've actually already spoken to at least the fire chief, but I'd like to, I think it needs to be understood why the staffing models that we have have been signed on to or have been supported because that drives whether it's you know two additional firefighters or two additional police because it's about the, the HR structure within the group that provides you know services so I'm looking at really the structure and how it was either previously approved or you know why because mm -hmm. I think there's comments out there um, about you know why is it that you need to have four firefighters that report to one lieutenant or whatever it might be. I'm not picking on the fire department. Just how, you know, how from an HR perspective well, each of these those models are created. Yeah, police has uh, a system they're looking to add additional personnel to respond to yep. service demand, whereas fire department, that's part of it, of course, that's driving it, but it's also transitioning the organization from one type of organization but, to yep. another. And it's, uh, it's an expensive yet very, very yep. important um, endeavor. So to the two of you, the question I have is that we have two hours um, at that next meeting to really get this work done. Um, do we want to tell Tom ahead of time we're going to spend one hour on the plan, the staffing plan, and then are we going to be able to get our work done within the next hour? Do you want to limit them to a half an hour? How do you want to do that? I think it depends on how much homework we can do ahead of time, really. Um, I think with Tom's uh, funding or, or adjustments that he's going to do to revenue, um, personally, I think I'd like to have that ahead of time. We can do our yeah. prioritization, if you will. Then, then it, to me, it's sure. really a, just a discussion of do our do our uh, uh, staffing suggestions line up accordingly, and if they don't, why and wh where do they need to be? I think that's a quick discussion. Um, 
and then how do we fund it? Again, I think it's pretty obvious where we're coming from. Sure. Where, you know, so I, personally, I, I, I think we could we could let's get do that, an hour each. I think we could get that done in an hour. Uh, yeah, we need to be flexible. Let's, let's do yeah. an hour each. Okay. Yeah. Although, is, it, is there any flexibility to start an hour earlier, just in case? I have a lot of stuff. I mean, my guess is we're going to have some challenging conversations. If we start at 3 or even 3.30, um, that just gives us a little bit of cushion in case. I don't have a calendar for me, but I should be able to. Let me ask one suggestion. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not opposed to that. If we, if we feel like we need the time, I'm, I, can, I can support that. I mean, to me, I think this, hopefully this isn't the first time we're looking at this. <laughs> well, so, so let's go ahead. Um, so if, if, if we can confirm a start at 3 o'clock, at the very least, um, we will have a meeting from 3 to 5 rather than 4 to 6, and at the very most, we'll have one from 3 to 6 if we feel that we need it, if we can get the room at 3 o'clock. At the back end, there is, just recall, you have a budget, a joint uh, town council school board workshop that evening at 7, so there's not immediate pressure if you run a little late. But That's true. I'm not sure if you yeah. want to be here straight away from Are you okay? four to. I, I'm okay either way. I can be flexible. So whatever the whatever you guys. Okay. Do. Uh, I'm okay. I would recommend we start at three o'clock. Okay. Um, if we can get the room, as long as we can get the room, we'll go from. Um, we'll tentatively schedule th uh, three to six. However, um, we're going to do it in an hour increment. You know, hour presentations from the staff regarding staffing, and then the, um, the adjustments, and then we'll have an hour. And if we need to take two hours, because it sounds like what might happen is that there'll be longer conversations on our end regarding post um, adjustments, right? And if we need it, we need it. If not, then we can always take a break before the next meeting. Is that good? I agree. So, excellent. Um, anything else? Is that good of the order? No. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Thank you very much, everybody.